If you are buying a used RTX 3000 series graphics card or an used RX 6000 series GPU, should you be thinking about changing the memory pads over? And how much is this going to benefit you? Well, in today's video, we have the RTX 3080 Seahawk, which I got on a used deal when I was doing my used parts hunt, which I do once a month here at Tech Yes City. And I was going to sell this to a friend, a friend of mine locally here in Japan, said he really wanted to buy this card. And I said to him, sure, you can have it for what I paid for it, plus a juicy steak as well. Get me a steak and we're even. And then he started to do a lot of research on RTX 3000 series cards. And apparently depending on the model, you may wish to change over your memory pads because it could make a difference. So I wanted to put this to the test. And in today's video, I ordered some Gelid GPTL Ultimate thermal pads off AliExpress for $10 shipped. And I'm going to be doing a before and after test to see how much we can drop those GDDR6X temperatures by and if it makes a difference at all because I feel like there is going to be a lot more used RTX 3000 series and also RX 6000 series cards from AMD hitting the used market very soon. And if you want to get that used graphics card for a bargain and you want to keep gaming on it for years to come, is this going to make a big difference? Let's find out. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. And now we've booted up our computer into Windows. We are getting ready to stress the VRAM specifically and not say for instance, the GPU core or other components in the system. And for this, we're going to need OCCT. I'll put the link in the description below for you guys. And once we open up this program, we then got choices where we can select our RTX 3080 by left clicking on it. But also in this right hand section, we can scroll down and make sure it's on the temperature tab up here. Scroll to temperature and scroll down to our RTX 3080. And here we'll be able to see the GPU temperature, but we've also got the memory junction temperature as well as a hotspot temperature. So these are the two that we are going to be monitoring while we're stress testing this VRAM on this RTX 3080. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna max, hold down a left click and max this slider to 95%. And this is with the stock thermal pads that MSI have put with the RTX 3080 Seahawk. So we're essentially going to uh, start the stress test right now and then wait about, we're gonna do this for 20 minutes since I do wanna get some very solid results. And another thing I'm doing to get consistent results as well is I've installed a program called MSI Afterburner, which I'll also put the link in the description below. And we're gonna change the slider right here to 80%. And we're gonna lock that in by left clicking. And that's essentially gonna make it so when we do the before and after test, we will then be able to get an apples to apples comparison and see what our temperatures are like making sure that our ambient temperature is the same, which in this case it will be because we are in an air conditioned controlled environment, which is at 26 degrees Celsius. So let's get this stress test underway and come back in 20 minutes. So we now finished up our 20 minute test on the RTX 3080 Seahawk and our max memory speed is 58 degrees Celsius and our hotspot temperature is 47.41. And now you may be wondering, why is this GPU hotspot temperature actually less than the memory temperature? And that's simply because this more has to do with the GPU core. And since we didn't stress the GPU core, that temperature is lower where we only stress the memory. However, finally time to change over these memory pads and then come back and see what temperatures we get. So we've now just finished this memory pad upgrade on the 3080 Seahawk. It was actually relatively easy on this card in particular because they used all the same screw heads. So I only needed one screwdriver to go through the whole card, take it apart. And then I also changed the thermal paste while I was at it. However, one thing you may wish to, or you may be wondering is how many of these pads did I need to do this upgrade? And I needed about one and a half pads or a little bit under one and a half. So if you're doing an RTX 3090, you'll definitely wanna get four pieces where this pack that I got here was two pieces. And the two mil in this case, it worked perfectly with this GPU in that the original thermal pads were also uh, two mil pads. So if you're going to be changing the pads on your graphics card before you buy the pads, it may be a, 
a wise option to just check the thickness of the GPU pads you currently have and then order the correct one. Because if you order the wrong ones, you can get a mismatch in the balancing of the cooler hitting the contact area on the GPU die and if the pads are wrong, it may cause really poor cooling or it may, of course, just not be touching your memory if you're going too small. So make sure you get the memory pad thickness right. In this case, two mil is perfect for the job. And with that aside, it's finally time to get our after results. And we have now finally got some results and I also decided to throw in an additional test before and after and that was where we started off with 80% fan speeds, I decided to drop the fan speeds down to 40%. Since this is a water-cooled RTX 3080, I'd say a lot of people may wish to use this GPU in a more silent manner since the temperatures don't go that high to begin with, both on the GPU and the memory itself. However, we've got the results here on the first test, the 80%, the before and after, where we got 58 degrees with the stock memory pads that MSI include on the GPU. Then that went down to 52 degrees. And so this was a difference of six degrees to be had on the water-cooled edition. Now, when we dropped the fan speeds down to 40%, we got 64 degrees going down to 56 degrees. So the delta was six degrees and then eight degrees when we lowered the fan speeds. So there was quite a sizable difference to be had here from changing these memory pads, considering it was a water-cooled GPU where the block on this GPU is directly touching those pads, which are then connected to the memory. And so if you're on a different GPU with say an air cooler and the memory pads weren't as good, or even if they're stock memory pads, then you may wish to consider changing them for this gelid solution that we used here today, where they did perform quite well. And I'd say on a higher end GPU, if you're gonna be using that for a long time, say for instance, you've got an RX 6800 XT or you've got an RTX 3080 or 3090, then I think for $10, this memory pad upgrade is actually gonna serve you pretty well to the point where I might then change it on my main rig now after seeing these results. So I was impressed with these memory pads and what they can do. But keep in mind, they do cost $10 and that's gonna to apply to most GPUs. If you're on a 3090, you have to spend $20 to get more pads because you can have a lot more memory modules versus the 3080, which has got 10 gigabytes versus the 24 gigabytes on the 3090. So in most cases, you are going to be fine with the two piece pack. And if you think about getting a one piece, then your GPU might be an inexpensive GPU to the point where you might not want to bother changing that on a lower end card because it's probably not worth the $10 and that GPU probably doesn't put out a whole lot of heat to begin with, where on the higher GPUs, they do tend to clock the memory speeds higher. And so those memory temperatures will go higher as those speeds go higher. So in today's test, these memory pads definitely made a difference. But for me personally, I'm only gonna really be using this on higher end GPUs that I come in contact with so the final test that we looked at was also the hot spot, the hottest point on the GPU. And you may be thinking, well, Brad, you didn't change anything on the core GPU itself, but we did change the pads. And if the thickness, as we said in the intro, is different, then that can make a difference. And it's important to also watch that hot spot to make sure you've got the right height and everything's gone smoothly in changing those pads around. But we also changed the thermal paste as well since it was dried out on this 3080. But with these tests out of the way, we now have a GPU that's running better than it was before. Though in the case of this Seahawk water-cooled, so it's gonna perform usually a lot better than air-cooled GPUs. And so it is something to consider that if you're going for say a higher end 3090 and it's air-cooled, and especially if you're buying it off a miner, then something like this upgrade that we did here today would probably be a good idea, especially if you wanna hold on to that GPU for a long time. Now, if you're buying one of those used mining GPUs, you wanna make sure, first of all, that you're getting a really good discount on it, really good price versus the street price of new cards for that same type, but also you wanna be checking that core slider and that memory slider to make sure you've got headroom on that GPU. The last thing on your mind may be, well, Brian, I'm not gonna be buying a used graphics card, whether it's from a gamer or from a miner, so why does this even apply to me? And in the case of this Seahawk edition here, it was an LHR version. 
So I don't think the previous owner was mining on it whatsoever, but also when I checked the condition of the card, it hadn't been pulled apart before and it was looking pretty schmick. Nothing was looking like it was heavily used. And so I think with this GPU, there was a difference there and it was pretty sizable, especially for a water-cooled GPU. So even if you're buying a new GPU and you wanna take care of it for a while, then this may be a good upgrade for you to do. But in the case of my friend who was reading up about the RTX 3080, especially the Seahawk edition online, there is a temperature difference to be had, but the temperatures before we did the upgrade were really not that bad to begin with. So perhaps the LHR version is actually a revision where MSI maybe used better memory pads than they did on the original 3080 uh, full hash rate that they released. So I'm not entirely sure why he's worried about the memory temperatures on this water-cooled card to begin with, but I'm gonna be charging him two stakes instead of one. And I like my ribeye fillet. Anyway, guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comment section down below. Have you had similar results? Have you tried changing memory pads before? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. But one thing I will stress is if you are opening up a GPU and you are changing things around, do be pretty careful. Uh, just because I do this in the video and I make it look easy, especially if it's your first time doing this, do take your time and be careful because you don't want to damage any of those components, especially if the GPU is expensive. Anyhow, guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. And if you stay this far and you're enjoying a tech yes content, as always, make sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.